There aren't many MMO games that do necromancy. The only ones I know of are Age of Conan and the Guild Wars games. Before I can begin talking about Age of Conan, I'd just like to point out that I don't really enjoy the MMO genre at all anymore, so recommending one is difficult. I have to look into my past to recommend this to a time where I was still capable of enjoying an MMO. I played World of Warcraft in 2004 when it was released, and quit sometime during 2005, before the Burning Crusade came out. Sometime during 2005 I also played Guild Wars Factions, but didn't enjoy it much, despite the Necromancer class seeming quite nice. I didn't touch an MMO again until 2014, when I decided to give Age of Conan a try, and I enjoyed it quite a lot for maybe 6 months or so. I like Age of Conan for two reasons. The first reason is because, as you may know already, I'm quite a big fan of the Conan world and I enjoy exploring it and seeing the little things that they left everywhere for those who've read the books. For example, on one of the islands near the beginner area, there's these strange buildings with green pools inside and large black humanoid creatures called black ones. These are supposed to be the pools and creatures from the Pool of the Black One story. The second and more important reason is because it meets my Cheb Gonaz criteria for good and satisfying necromancy in a game. Let's take a look. Plentiful minions. You can have a decent swarm of minions in this game. It works on a point based system where weaker minions cost less points to maintain, yet stronger ones cost more. So you can have a couple of tough ones or a load of weaker ones. As you level up you get more points to a maximum of 8 points. The weakest minions, mutilators, corruptors, blighted ones, necrotic bombs, harvester and life stealer, all cost 1 point. So at max level you can have a swarm of 8 of these things. In the middle you've got magus and reaper, costing 2 points. Finally the most expensive minions cost 4 points, and these are the arch magus and blood arcanist. Now this is cool because you get to decide your unit composition and can go quality, quantity, or a mixture of both. Useful minions. All the minions, even the weaker ones, serve a unique purpose. Mutilators are weak and is the first minion you get, but stay useful the entire game by being a great numerous high damage option. Likewise, Arcanists and Magi, etc. have ranged attacks making them serve a different role. All in all, these minions are all very useful. Minions are permanent. There's no stupid timers or whatever that are going to ruin your fun. A minion persists until you release it or it is killed. It makes you feel like you're actually in control of your minions and you're a somewhat powerful necromancer. Finally, your necro is kind of squishy without the minions. They're an important part of the necromancer and without them your necro is effectively disarmed. This is fantastic. There's also a bonus. You can choose to sacrifice some resistances to get even more points, weakening yourself for more minions. You can do this with the one with death feet. It stacks up to three times and costs some resistances each time. So really, Age of Conan ticks every single box in my criteria of what makes a minion-based necromancer great. A superb job, really. It honestly saddens me quite a bit that a game with such a great necromancer isn't more renowned. If you like MMOs, and you like minions and necromancers, give the game a try. It's free to play as of now, so there's little reason not to give the chance. If I was to return to playing MMOs again, this would be the first one I'd try. Before I go, let's take a look at these minions in more detail. I mentioned before that there's a point based system with a maximum of 8 points which can be further raised to 11 by weakening yourself. There's three main categories of minions. The Undead Minions category provides melee attacker minions that cost 1 point. The Deathless Acolytes category provides caster minions that all used ranged spell attacks. The Dread Archmage category provides powerful mage minions. I've actually never been able to try these because they require special reagents to summon and I lost interest before I unlocked them. These are the one point minions from the Undead Minions category. The Mutilator. This bloke looks like someone flayed a hunchback with unkept fingernails. 
His attacks can cause bleeding, which stacks and deals slashing damage. The Corrupter. He kinda looks like a zombie and has a chance of additional unholy damage on attack. The Harvester. Not sure how you'd describe him. He kind of looks crystalline or like petrified bone, perhaps. He's humanoid, but clearly not human. The skull structure is quite strange. His attacks have a chance of bestowing mana and stamina on the Necromancer's team. Necrotic Bomb. A funny, stinking blob of floating flesh. It will detonate when attacked or at the will of the necromancer. Life Stealer. Kinda looks like a dead Vanya warrior with red hair, but the face is bestial and the ears are pointed. His attacks have a chance of stealing life from the target and returning it to the necromancer's team. The Blighted One is a strange fella. Definitely looks like a cadaver. His attacks have a chance of damaging the mana of the target. The Arcanist. Its spells have a chance of augmenting the attacks of its master and brethren with extra damage. Something I really love about these acolytes is how they look. It's like they're kind of scaly or something, or they're wearing some kind of scale mail. Very interesting. I love the robes and the strange mask as well. The Magus. It deals a small amount of splash damage around its primary target. This is the weakest of the Deathless Acolytes you can summon. The Reaper. Its spells have a chance of draining life from the target and healing the Necromancer's team. I don't have any Shackled Hearts, so I can't show you the Dread Arch Mage minions, unfortunately. But there you have it. All the basic minions covered. You can see why all of them are useful in different ways, especially in PvP. Blighted ones work nicely against enemy mages, depriving them of their mana. I remember back when I used to play this game, two Acolytes and four Undead minions worked well in general, but there were times I went for all Acolytes, especially versus other players. You can stealth so other players can't find you, and then set your minions forth to attack them. Kind of funny. If you're hidden well, it's a lot of fun. There's also a bunch of abilities to use minions for an effect. For example, you can sacrifice a minion and cause fear effect on the enemies around it. You can set up health siphons that siphon health from your minions to heal you. You can also cause a melee minion like a mutilator to go into a frenzy for a while. This makes them increase in size and draw aggro, letting them behave like a tank. It only lasts for a short time though. There's also the large feet tree that lets you make your minions more useful. Silence of the Dead reduces aggro they receive. Not useful when alone, but can be good in groups of other players. Unholy power increases their damage. I won't go through them all, but there's a bunch of them there to boost your minions. So there you have it. That's Necromancy in Age of Conan. If you've ever wondered what it's like, now you know.